Coming up on today's show, I want to run through all the hires that Kevin Stefanski made, recap them, and then give out some grades because I feel like giving out grades is the easiest way to digest all the hires made by Stefanski and the Browns, which ones I like more than others. So let's jump into it, starting with the offensive coordinator, Ken Dorsey, which I'm going to give a B plus. Some people might be higher. Some people might be lower. I'm kind of in the middle on the Ken Dorsey hire. First, we'll kind of look at his resume, and then I'll tell you why I'm somewhat in the middle. He was the Bills OC for the last two years. Before that, he was Josh Allen's quarterback coach and pass game coordinator. And before that, he was the Carolina Panthers quarterback coach, where he helped Cam Newton win a Heisman Trophy. So Ken Dorsey has worked with a lot of really good quarterbacks. Cam Newton and Josh Allen are the most notable two. And Deshaun Watson definitely has some similarities to those quarterbacks. And make no mistake, the OC hire was completely predicated on which candidate can get the most out of Deshaun Watson. Because the last two years, it felt like there was more meat left on the bone from what AVP was able to get out of number four. Ken Dorsey comes in working with quarterbacks who have lots of similarities to Deshaun Watson, right? He's gotten good passing production out of Josh Allen and Cam Newton, and both those quarterbacks are able to run the football very well, and Deshaun Watson, we know, is able to scramble and use his legs to pick up yards. Under Ken Dorsey, you can see Cam Newton's MVP season, and then I would say Josh Allen's best season as Dorsey's being as Dorsey being the offensive coordinator. And both quarterbacks put up tremendous numbers, right? Cam Newton, 35 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Josh Allen threw the ball very well, but he also did a great job of rushing the ball. And I think the most most important uh, element of this OC hire is looking at Deshaun Watson as a quarterback, not a running back who can throw the ball well, which of course is not what Deshaun Watson is, but there really needs to be an overemphasis on Deshaun Watson is here to be a passer first, and Ken Dorsey has done that with Cam Newton and Josh Allen, while also recognizing they've got good rushing abilities. Let's not just ignore that altogether. But the big question remains, who's calling plays? Is it Ken Dorsey, or is it Kevin Stefanski? And that is really what is up for, I wouldn't even say debate here, but what we're waiting to see, because When Ken Dorsey had his introductory press conference earlier this week, Kevin Stefanski opened it up, and he did not tell us who would be calling the plays, as Mary Kay tweeted out. We'll get there. It's February 5th. So there really is no rush to decide whether it's today or tomorrow. I'm not quite sure if they are still pondering it. The way Kevin Stefanski, just his tone and body language, which I know that's reading in a little bit too much, but... People say that you learn more from tone and body language than the actual words itself. It kind of felt like Ken Dorsey had a real chance, real chance of becoming the play caller because if the plan is for Stefanski to hold on to play calling duties, I feel like he would have just started the press conference with, I'm going to remain the play caller. But the fact that he didn't do that definitely leaves the door open for Dorsey taking over play calling duties from Stefanski. Personally, I prefer Stefanski to call plays for the Browns. He just won his second NFL Coach of the Year award. Congrats congrats to Stefanski. One of 13 coaches to win said award multiple times. And one of his greatest strengths is his play calling ability, right? So I just don't think it's the most logical sense of, hey, your coach just won Coach of the Year. He got the most out of a handful of quarterbacks. He was pressing all the right buttons. And we want to take away play calling duties from him. Like, I, I will agree, he was definitely a better play caller from, for Joe Flacco than Deshaun Watson. So maybe ultimately, Stefanski's DNA as a coach and what he wants to do isn't the best mesh with Deshaun Watson. And that's why Dorsey would be a better play caller for Deshaun Watson. Because, I mean, Joe Flacco and Deshaun Watson are not the same type of quarterback. But to me, it just feels like you're overthinking. Coach of the year, five different starting quarterbacks, 11 wins. And the idea is let's take play calling away from that guy. Someone sell me on that being a good idea. I haven't gotten to that spot yet. So let me know what you think. Should Stefanski call plays? Yes or no? If they ultimately go with Ken Dorsey, 
I'm not going to have a major freak out or meltdown. He's got plenty of play calling experience. He did a lot of really good things in Buffalo, but I think you should continue riding with a hot hand. Let's move on to our most recent coaching hire, which is offensive line coach Andy Dickerson. Andy Dickerson comes over from the Pacific Northwest, where he was the Seattle Seahawks offensive line coach. Before that, he was with the Rams in St. Louis and L.A., serving in a variety of roles. Running backs coach, assistant offensive line coach. He worked his way up the Rams food chain before he got the job in Seattle. where He started off as the run game coordinator and then became the offensive line coach. Now, I remember we talked about this when they hired, uh, when they interviewed uh, Coach Dickerson. This felt more of a Bill Callahan replacement than an AVP replacement. So the Browns did their homework, and they identified Dickerson very early on that he would be a prime candidate to replace Bill Callahan if it ever got to that point, and that's exactly what happened. He's got a long resume, so he's got plenty of coaching experience. I also, I don't know why, I kind of like the fact that his Wikipedia says he was an intern. I mean, it just goes to show, I think a lot of us watching have had an internship at some point. And for you to rise the ranks and climb up going from intern to offensive line coach, you clearly know how to work the room and how to just overall impress and woo your bosses. So credit to Dickerson from going from intern all the way to offensive line coach. Now, I also want to highlight what he had to work with in Seattle. These are the five starting offensive linemen for the Seattle Seahawks when everyone's healthy-ish. They dealt with a lot of injuries this past year. And you can see that there's been some good investments made on this offensive line, but I'm looking at a UDFA round four guy, a pair of third-round picks, just one first-round pick on the Seahawks offensive line. And Geno Smith was not running for his life this past season. They definitely struggled at times running the football, which is why I had this more as a B-plus grade than an A- minus or A grade because the Browns really need to improve their ground game, and the offensive line's a huge part of that. But to take a bunch of day, late day two, early day three UDFAs and to graduate to this offensive line where you've got Jed Wills, first rounder, Joel Petonio, second rounder, future Hall of Famer, Ethan Posick, good player, Wyatt Teller, good player, Jack Conklin, first rounder. Like the Browns have made a much bigger investment in their offensive line in terms of draft capital and just overall free agency spending, right? Bringing over Jack Conklin, bringing over Ethan Posick, and then re-signing Ethan Posick. So Cleveland has put a much bigger emphasis in building up their offensive line than Seattle did. And I thought the Seahawks offensive line this past season was above average. Would you say so, Colin? Yeah, Colin's a Seahawks fan. And it's not a top five O-line, that, that's fair to say. It's definitely not a bottom 10 offensive line. So it's one of those, I, I think this is a loose analogy where it's like, hey, if you hire a college football coach that did really well in a group of five school and you give them the resources of a power five school, imagine what they can do. I think that's similar for Andy Dickerson, right? He goes from a offensive line that made an average investment up front to a Browns offensive line that's made a huge investment up front and he should do a great job. My ultimate uh, parting piece with Coach Dickerson is don't mess it up. It's a top five offensive line of football, and it's closer to one than five. So I'm not going to call him a glorified babysitter because there is work to do in, in terms of improving the ground game. And as a run game coordinator in his past, he's going to have a big part of that. But ultimately, it's don't rock the boat. You've got a great offensive line. Don't screw the pooch. Bill Callahan is leaving the Browns offensive line in an excellent place. Now, before we get on to the rest of today's show, I do want to tell you guys about our sponsor today, which is Mando. Now, how many times have you guys heard someone say, new year, new me? And that's not really true. But how many times have you heard someone say, new year, no stink? Now, that is what Mando is all about. From the makers of Loom Deodorant, Mando is here to make sure 2024 is the year you showcase your best hygiene. If you suffer from stinky feet, pits, or even below the belt, then Mando's doctor-developed and clinically proven odor blocker is worth giving a shot. And they are giving the Dog Pound $5 off their starter pack when you go to shopmando.com and use code, there it is, chat. So go to shopmando.com and use promo code chat and get $5 off. Now, what does their starter pack include? It's great for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, 
cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. Now, luckily, like I said, you can get $5 off when you use code CHAT at shopmando.com. I put all that information in the comments and description of today's video. So shout out to Mando for supporting the Cleveland Browns report. Let's get back to our coaching grades now. Moving on to the running backs coach, Deuce Staley, which I'm going to give an A grade to. And before we started filming, producer Colin was like, I don't know how I feel about an A grade. And I do think there are maybe some speed bumps to Deuce Staley's career, which we'll talk about in a moment. But here's his background. This past season, he was in Carolina as the assistant head coach and running back coach. Now, being associated with the 2023 Carolina Panthers is not a very good thing. But when you look at what they were able to do on the ground, I mean, they were the worst passing team in football last year. But they were 20th or so in rushing. I mean, he took over a running back room that recently signed Miles Sanders that clearly was a bit of a bust of a signing. And Chuba Hubbard eventually rose to the top. And, I mean, 3.8 yards a pop isn't great, but getting 902 yards out of a backup running back to begin the season, I think you're clearly doing something right as a coach if that's the case. Before that, he was in Detroit, where Jamal Williams rushed for 17 touchdowns. So fantasy owners that had DeAndre Swift that year might not like him a ton. But from a team perspective, I don't care who gets a touchdown. I just want the touchdown. And then Miles Sanders in 2020, his best year, you could say, with Deuce Daly, he averaged over five yards a carry. So I'm very upbeat about the Deuce Daly hire. He was also in between the Browns and the Jets. And I feel like him choosing Cleveland is a real sign that Nick Chubb is going to be healthy in 2024. On to our fourth coaching hire, Tommy Reese, tight end coach who was the Alabama offensive coordinator in 2023. So let's look at Tommy Reese's resume a little bit closer. He comes over as the pass game coach and the tight ends coach, and he was the OC last year in Tuscaloosa. Of course, before that, the former Notre Dame quarterback was the Fighting Irish offensive coordinator and QB coach. He actually had a brief stint in the NFL with the Chargers back in 2016. But we're looking at tight ends specifically, and I mean, if you look at what the Notre Dame tight end room has produced, looking at a second rounder last year by the Raiders, a third rounder by the Panthers two, two seasons prior, Cole Komet, a second rounder by the Bears back in 2020. So Notre Dame is quietly becoming maybe a little bit of a tight end U, and that was all while Tommy Reese was a part of that, organ, a part of that uh, program there in South Bend. So I think he has a thing or two about getting the best out of tight ends, and so for the Browns to bring him on as their tight ends coach, that's obviously very exciting. But more importantly, I'm looking at this not through the lens of a tight end side of things, but a coach that was hired by Nick Saban at the age of 30 to be his play caller, you don't just dumb luck your way into being Alabama's offensive coordinator at 30 years old. Nick Saban's got a great track record of making fantastic hires for his coordinator roles because his coordinators are constantly being poached by other teams. So I'm going to go on a limb and say, if Nick Saban deems you are worthy to be his play caller at 30 years old, and you're a big part of turning around that Alabama 2023 season that lost a home game to Texas in September, and then got Jalen Milrow, who looked completely broken all the way to the college football playoff. Yeah, I think all that good stuff is going to override one super stupid play call with your season on the line against Michigan. That's how I'm going to look at it. And let's get on to our fifth and final hire, which is the defensive line coach, Jaquez Cesare. He comes over from the Houston Texans, where he was their defensive line coach. He's been around the league for a couple of years now. He, of course, played in the NFL as a defensive end. Didn't have a super terrific playing career, but... I mean, a lot of coaches don't have great playing careers, so I'm not really concerned about that whatsoever. He was the defensive line coach helping out with the Chargers, then the Bills, then the Texans, and then now with the Cleveland Browns. Kevin Stefanski is very excited about this hire. Here's what he had to say. Jaquez brings energy and a proven track record as both a player and coach in this league. He has made his impact felt in every place he has been, and we know he will come in and work to increase an already high standard for our defensive line. 
and he gets to work with the reigning defensive player of the year. So similar to Coach Dickerson, just don't rock the boat. But let's kind of wrap up the video by looking at the entire coaching staff now. You've got Kevin Stefanski, Ken Dorsey, still waiting on who the quarterback's coach is going to be, if there is going to be one. Deuce Staley is the running back's coach. Chad O'Shea stays the wide receiver coach. Tommy Reese takes over for tight ends. And Andy Dickerson on the offensive line. On the defensive side, you've got yet another award-winning coach in Jim Schwartz. Congratulations to Jim for winning assistant coach of the year. Cesar is his defensive line coach. And then the rest of the staff is essentially the same from last season. So that is your 2024 Cleveland Browns coaching staff. There may be one or two more additions or changes, but probably uh, close to being set in stone at this pace. So let me know, how would you grade the five coaches that were hired? Given A grade, B grade, C grade, D grade. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. I'd probably give it a A minus B plus. Ultimately, it's tough to really look at position coaches higher with an extreme eye for good or bad, right? If a tight end breaks out for a team, so many people get credit. The head coach, the offensive coordinator, the tight end coach, and the tight end. And it's really tough to say who was the most instrumental element of that breakout without being in that locker room. So I'm not going to stand here and pretend to know, oh, I'm telling you guys, what you know, Coach uh, Reese was able to do in Alabama, that's all him. No, I'm sure other players and coaches had a role in their success and things like that. All right, let's wrap up the video by picking a card. Colin, what are you thinking? Actually, I'm just more excited. What roundabout way are you going to get to your card today? <laughs> So, okay, four coaching hires. Okay, here we go. Five coaching hires. Oh, five. So, okay, so we'll go five. Um, yeah, that's right, with the new addition. So, five diamonds in the roof. Go five diamonds. I like it. I like it. I'm going to go with four Browns coaches slash players, whatever, won awards at the NFL Honors last night. And they're all hearts in my heart. So, I'm going to go four hearts. This is the third time this year. Four of clubs. Four of clubs. I am Gordon Haywarding at Butler, the shit out of pick a car this year. That's going to do it for us on today's show. We'll let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your Friday and the rest of your weekend. Go Brownies.